Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, councillors. Welcome to the Cabinet meeting of the 27th of April 2023. Uh, and as noted just before we started, this is the last Cabinet meeting of the municipal year. Uh, so just a quick note of thanks to the Cabinet for all the hard work you've put in over the last 12 months. It's been, a, it's been an exciting and challenging year and, uh, and we've achieve, achieved quite a few big things over the last 12 months. So, so well done and thank you for the, the effort and the time you've all put in. So straight into agenda item one, apologies for absence. We've received apologies from Councillor Bailey and Councillor Pritchard, who can't make it this evening. And I believe everyone else is here. Uh, so item two, minutes of the meeting held on the 6th of April. You all wish I sign those as a true record? Mm -hmm. Councillor Clements has moved. Councillor Dorn nodded, so we'll take that as a second. All those in favour? Okay, that's carried. Thank you very much. I'll get those signed in a moment. Uh, item three on the agenda is decorations of interest. Does anybody have any pecuniary interest to declare? No. And that brings us on to item number four, which is questions from members of the public. Uh, and this evening we have a question from uh, Mr. Hall. Uh, so would you like to press your button and ask the question, please, sir? Yeah. yeah okay. Um, good evening. Um, Yes, so um, can the executive leadership team and others update us on the progress of the future High Street funded regeneration of Tamworth programme in the town centre that the Borough Council are delivering? I am particularly interested to hear an update on the schedule progress, overview of costs and expenses to date and funds assigned to outside agencies. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hall. Uh, so it's um, it's full steam ahead with the Future High Street Fund project, uh, and a number of key milestones have been hit uh, with the contractors uh, on board, uh, and also uh, with the with actually delivery of the programme. So we have a contractor on board, uh, the multi uh, uh, multi skilled group of people uh, who are being looked after by Spell and Metcalf. Uh, and they've got a, a great reputation uh, within the industry on delivering these sorts of projects. And also, importantly, keeping communities updated, because uh, I'm aware that very often, uh, unless you keep repeating the message, it gets lost and, and people lose track of, of where we are. Uh, so the Borough Council is handing uh, over a number of uh, project designs to be delivered uh, by this contractor, uh, and also completed a number of stages in terms of the design work of the project itself. Uh, you'll be aware that the old cooperative building uh, was purchased by the Borough Council and that has now been demolished uh, and the start of the new college build is expected in April, May this year in terms of start, start date. Um, within that there was design work and, and planning permission was obviously uh, sought for that. Planning permission and design work has been completed in terms of the flex units which are the shops at the rear of this building here, the old parade leading from George Street up into the entrance of Middle Entry. Uh, so design work has, uh, and planning permission has been approved on that one. Um, there's also designs have been uh, agreed and handed over to the contractor in relation to the new square that will be created by those shops at the back of uh, the town hall and also the uh, entranceway to the castle grounds. So in terms of, of those milestones, I believe uh, St. Arthur Square has also received a, a significant amount of design work which we've agreed on in terms of a, a, future, um, uh, a, a future plan. So in terms of the, the physical work, you'll also know the, uh, the canopy has been removed in St. Arthur Square and that square has been opened up prior to works which will happen later on in the project. Uh, but that was also done as part of the, uh, as part of the phase where we demolished uh, the, the cooperative building. So, in terms of where we're at with the project, we are where we should be. In terms of costs, we are where we should be in terms of cost. I can't go into detail as, as to how much has been awarded to each agency because of commercial confidentiality and, and the like. Uh, but, uh, but what I can say is they are within the original spec that we set out when we started this project way back in 2019. In terms of costs as we go forward, and the reason I've suggested uh, I've raised the date of 2019 is because it was four years ago when we when we started to put this together, uh, and obviously there are increasing in construction costs and material costs. They are 
within projects at the moment, and we're continually reviewing those in terms of the outside agency costs there within where they where they were in the original part of the of, of the project. Uh, in terms of those other agents in, involved, I've already also men already mentioned that uh, Spell and Metcalf are our lead uh, group on those, uh, but we've also got uh, heritage specialists, uh, structural specialists, uh, and, and others that we need to consult with as and when appropriate to give us specialist information. And an example of that would be the properties uh, on Market Street, uh, which are of a, of a particular age and nature where they've had to have specialist attention and we've had to have specialist ad advice on those. So that is a very brief summary <laughs> of where we're at uh, with the project at the moment. Uh, but it is, uh, as I say, it's, uh, it's all, all speed ahead. Uh, the project board receives regular updates the Audit and Governance Committee uh, also re receive regular updates on risk and the uh, uh, and the costings uh, to uh, and the un risk costings and financial guidance in terms of uh, value for money, etc. Uh, and the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee uh, receive regular updates on on the, the practical side of the project as well. Do you have a supplementary? I do. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I don't have the original um, plans to hand, but could you just confirm then what the budget number was for those outside agencies? If you are on course and on budget, what was that number, please? I, I haven't got that to hand. I'd have to dig that out and 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 and, and sort that out for you. But uh, like I say, it was all part of the original bid. But I can I can get I can get those figures. Uh, to you. I can get those budgets to you. Yeah, Chair, if it's helpful, the original budget figures for it will appear in the Council's budget for that year as part of the capital programmes. So there'll be a line with um, 21.6 million and how that's funded in the actual budget documents. Are you asking me to go and find those then or are you able to produce them? It's public information, so you're free to, um, to, to get them if you, if, if if you could, wish to do if so. I could. Um, that's why I said I'll get them to you. I can, I can point to where they are, but I'll, I can also as quickly send you an email with those included. So. Uh, thanks, because yeah. you were saying that and somebody else was saying something different. Thank you. If you can send those to me, that would be very good. Yeah. Uh, I think the point that Mr Barrett was making was that they are publicly available, so it's no issue in, in sending them to you. Yeah. No problem. Okay, thank you very much, Mr Hall. And thank you for your question. So if I may return to the agenda, uh, the next item is matters referred to the Cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedurals, uh, and these are the report of the Chair of Health and Wellbeing, Councillor Maycock. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Cabinet, and thank you, officers, for uh, receiving me tonight. Uh, I bring two um, separate recommendations, one, one with a a couple within it. Um, would you like me to do them one at a time? Uh, yes, please. So uh, the, the first one was in regards to a petition uh, that was put forward to full council and the matter referred to the Health and Wellbeing uh, Committee to examine the what, what we've got and, and how we're using it and possibilities of moving forward uh, in regards to the castle ground toilets and the wider toilet facilities around the town. Uh, we had the uh, assistant director, uh, Paul Weston, who came uh, and gave us a talk about the, the toilets and that from the previous chair, uh, Council Haymore and myself, uh, it's been an ongoing conversation and collection of uh, data uh, and evidence which was given to the committee and we have resolved that one, uh, the cabinet explore the allocation of contingency funds to adequately resource and fund the cleaning of the castle ground toilets with sufficient cleaning allocated to weekends and holiday periods. Number two, that cabinet explore with officers, the community toilet scheme with local businesses. Number three, that Cabinet continue with the current daily seven day a week, nine to five opening of the Castle Ground Toilets and explore extending the opening hours during the summer period to 7pm. 
uh, number four, that Cabinet explore the installation of an intercom in the changing facilities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Maycock. Any questions or comments from Cabinet members? Everyone's shaking their head. Okay. Um, if I may, Councillor Maycock, uh, I appreciate this report's quite short. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of detail with those recommendations in terms of, for example, sufficient cleaning allocated. And what's the definition of su sufficient? Uh, so, so what I was going to ask is if we can have more detail in terms of your, your working documents on these. Happy to, to take these on board and take them away and look at them, uh, but if we can have some context from the committee as to as, as to what you deem as a sufficient level of cleaning in comparison with what, what is already uh, performed down there and delivered down there. Uh, uh, and also, in terms of the, uh, the community toilet scheme, uh, we've had many conversations over many, many years with businesses in the town centre about, uh, about availability of, of toilets and, and so on. Uh, so it'd be interesting to have some more information as to how, how we go about delivering uh, on that on that scheme, uh, but if uh, if it's possible, if we could have more information on on those for cabinet to consider when we consider those recommendations, it'll be it'll be useful. But I'm quite happy to take those recommendations uh, as as something to to think about and have a further conversation later on. Cabinet members, how do you feel about that? Councillor Door. Um, I'll be honest, this is a regularly, regular reoccurring item, so it would be good to see it finally resolved one way or another. So, um, in the time that I've been on Cabinet, 11 years, I, I've lost count of the amount of times that it's popped up. So it would be good to see some resolution for it. Thank you. Uh, did somebody else indicate? Was it? Councillor Farrell. Thank you. I agree with Councillor Doyle. Actually, it has gone on a while, but I also agree with you, Chair. I think we, um, I think this could be fleshed out a little bit more. There's lots of nuances involved with the, the toilet situation, so I think further discussion possibly is on the horizon. But I'd like to see it resolved pretty soon. Okay. So what I'm going to suggest is that Cabinet take away these four recommendations. Uh, we produce our response and we respond to scrutiny rather than take any action and get feedback from scrutiny on, on that response in the first instance. Are we happy with that? Okay, so I'll, I'll move that. Uh, do I have a second? Councillor Dawes seconds. All those in favour? Okay, that's carried. So thank you very much, Councillor Maycock. We'll consider them and we'll feed back direct to the Health and Wellbeing Committee to, to ensure that our actions meet the aspirations of that committee before we go any further. Sorry, Councillor Cummins, the, the, the Cabinet will feed back. We, we have local elections next week, and who knows how many of us are still going to be here. Uh, so the next one is uh, also a recommendation from Councillor Maycock. So back to you, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so this was a work plan item which was um, suggested by Councillor Goodall, and it was to look at... What um, what's in place for staff and councillor uh, well-being, both in relation to physical and emotional well-being? Um, I got uh, the policy document which included staff, uh, but that doesn't stretch to councillors. Uh, the, the recommendation is basically around the well-being aspect of that plan not so much the, the, the other benefits or benefits in coin that, that, that staff might, may or may not get. Um, and I just think that uh, for councillors to act in the best interests of the residents, they need to be in a prime state of mind to be able to do that. And if there are instances in their lives that may make that difficult, the well-being section 
of a scheme like that would be beneficial uh, and so the recommendation is to recommend to cabinet that a member benefit scheme in terms of mental well-being support only be considered thank you okay, thank you councillor maycock uh, any questions or comments from cabinet members on that one councillor clements yeah the obvious one how is it going to be funded Councillor Maycock, has the committee considered anything around funding or uh, the, 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 what the scheme is? There is prices, um, obviously, because of sensitivities. I wouldn't really like to say that, but but it it it's not a great deal at all. Thank you, uh, Mr. Barrett. No, thank thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm as quite sort of excited to, to see this come through because the principle of it is it is ideal um, elected members are subjected to the same mental demands as as office of the councillor so from a, a principal point of view um, I think it's, it, it certainly has some legs there are a couple of um, areas of caution which I'd probably just like to outline um, obviously we to, to do this it would have to go through our procurement process which would be a given, um, and we do need to take some advice as to whether it is perceived as being a, a benefit in kind. It's, it's, it's a very grey area, so we'd have to take some advice on that, um, if indeed it's funded by the council. Of course, the other option is that members could sacrifice some of their allowance to, um, to do this as, a, you know, as part of a, a wider scheme. It's all food for thought, but certainly the when I discussed it with the, with the HR team, they thought you know it's got legs to uh, to go. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Um, members have received discussions and training in terms of uh, mental health services and in terms of mental health first first aid, etc. Uh, but this is this is something different. This is about supporting the individual member uh, who who may have particular challenges at any particular time um be interested to see uh the the information that mr barrett's just referred to in terms of hr and their feedback uh because uh and i think i'm going to disagree with mr barrett on one point in terms of uh the the mental well-being pressures between officers and, and members and i appreciate that that may have uh, recently we may have seen uh, issues where officers have been drawn into public debate uh, through social media, which they should never be. Uh, but the difference is, as councillors do on a daily basis, but that's what we volunteer for. doesn't mean it doesn't take a toll. Uh, so I think we should look at this uh, and look at the different options available, get that feedback, uh, and also see, see what we can and, and can't, can't deliver on. Uh, and in terms of the funding, that's a, a supplementary argument that I'm sure we can have at some point. Uh, Councillor Farrell. Thank you, Chair. Just like Mr. Barrett said, I, I agree um, wholeheartedly in principle. I think it's a fabulous idea and initiative. Um, it just it just draws some complications. For example, um, Mr. Barrett said about um, whether members would need to contribute. Now, some members might uh, via their workplace be on the, uh, a private healthcare um, system, for example, that might include that with what they do outside of council. So, you know, would there be an opt-in or opt-out situation per councillor? Um, I like the idea, but I just think we need to explore it more. Okay, so the recommendation is that Cabinet uh, that a member benefit scheme in terms of mental wellbeing support only be considered by Cabinet. I think there's two parts to that. I think the first thing is, uh, and whilst we, we there seems to be general support in the room, uh, I think the first thing is, that I'd like to move that we consider what support is available and supplementary to that, have the discussion about whether it is provided by the, the council purse or another option. So if I, if I can move those two, do I have a seconder? Councillor Farrell seconds, all those in favour? Okay, that is unanimous, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your recommendations, Councillor Maycock. Thank you, Chair. Uh, all right, sir. So to it or uh, feel free to stay till the end of the meeting thank you you can also feel free to leave if you wish <laughs> okay so that is item five so moving on to item six 
Income management and recovery policy. This is a portfolio holder for homelessness prevention and social housing. Councillor Farrell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, this report sets out our approach as a council to our council housing income uh, recovery policy. It's, uh, it's it's good news as a council. We're, we're using a, a one council approach as we always do. Um, you'll know in the report we are receiving £19.5 million. Um, we've uh, had a, a reduction of 12,000 in arrears um, from the year 21 22 to 22 23. Um, the report's been uh, goes into things in, in great detail. Um, also explains how we're supporting tenants with the cost of living. So, um, it's, it's a good report, well worth a read, uh, and thank you to the officers who've put it together. And I'd like to um, put them recommendations, those four recommendations, to Cabinet. Thank you. Thank you much, Councillor Farrell. Any questions or comments from Cabinet? No, Councillor Farrell has... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Councillor Clements, would you like to read your notes, please? I think someone might, might want to go home. Um, I was just going to ask... Um, there are certain people that we never chase for arrears. And I get that there's a cost implication to that. But surely if someone owes us money, we should look at the situation they're in and take everything into account before we decide that we're not going to chase those arrears. So I just wondered what the what the process around that was, Councillor Farrell. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we do we do support tenants who are struggling. Um, there's a wide range of early intervention measures um, that we put through. Um, you know, we support them. We're looking for government government schemes. Um, team have issued kind of a, a number of emergency food bank vouchers. That's detailed in the report as well. Um, so there's various different funding. Um, some of it's in the report. We also have discretionary uh, late payments. Um, we do have, we do. Uh, in essence, work with people who are struggling to pay, and there's there's of course a difference between those that can't pay and those that won't pay. Um, so the the revenues and collections team uh, are very experienced on that and uh, know where the line is. But yeah, it's it's a fair question. But we we uh, we fight for everything we can uh, within means. If that answers your question. So just quickly, if somebody um, is in arrears with us and then, for example, moves to a different borough or another place, and then they decide they want to come back, How? Do, where does that leave them then if they are still in arrears with Tamworth Council? It's a good question, Councillor Clemens. I'd, I'd defer to the officers on that because uh, that's a specific case. I, I, I'm aware that whilst we write off our write-offs every quarter, uh, that's an accounting mm -hmm. process, and we never forget a debtor. So anyone that comes back into the town and uh, particularly uh, puts their hand up and says, I'd like a council house, then we've got them and we'll pursue them for the debt, however old that debt is. We, we, uh, I almost said we're like elephants, we never forget. But, uh, but yeah, we, we may well write them off in terms of the, uh, the accountancy and the write-offs, but we will still pursue that debt at every opportunity. Uh, in terms of uh, the comment made about those that, uh, that won't pay, uh, I, I relatively recently raised an issue where I believed somebody uh, was performing in a way to avoid payment of, of rent arrears uh, and the conversation I had with officers assured me that they've heard everything before and they are very aware of, uh, of all the tricks in the book and they, they will continue to pursue that. Um, do you want to add anything, Tina? Uh, if only. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Farrell. Absolutely, just to support what the portfolio holder has said, we, you know, we use a range of measures to pursue all rent arrears, whatever the amount. And the focus is very much on early intervention and prevention. And you'll see from the figures this year um, that they're the lowest they've been for the last four years almost. Um, which, given the significant pressures, is a is a real achievement. And that's done through you know a one council approach so whether it's through our benefit teams maximizing their income from that point of view whether it's investing in the voluntary sector through the tamworth advice center by providing money and debt advice that is all 
um, the emphasis around that. And you'll see elsewhere in the report that those arrears recovery is still achieved with eviction being an absolute last resort. So, you know, eviction levels are really low. But just to answer your specific question around write-offs, as the leader said, we do um, support our revenues team with a quarterly write-off report. Um, but obviously, where that goes into a former tenant debt, if then that person comes back to us or we're aware of where they've gone to, we still actively pursue that and we are successful with that. Um, so it's only written off where it's uneconomical to pursue um, or it's statute barred after six years, etc. But again, if that household or that person comes back, it is written, it is written back on. But our whole ethos is trying to prevent that in the first place. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Okay, you've moved those recommendations, Councillor. Just Farrell. like to say oh, one thing. Um, in my experience in dealing with the tenants and that, from the council aspect in terms of debt recovery or outstanding debts, you've actually been quite good in negotiation with residents to resolve those issues. Um, if any residents do experience such problems, I'd advise them to come forward and speak to the housing officers because of all the cases I've been uh, involved in, we've always managed to sort things out. Thank you. No, thank you for that comment, Councillor Dorr. Uh, Councillor Farrell has proposed it. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Summers seconds. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, agenda item 7 is the Statement of Intent EC04. Councillor Farrell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this report is to uh, seek agreement to declare a Statement of Intent that enables the Council to participate in the Energy Company Obligation Scheme known as ECO4 and ECO4 Flex. Um, we're all aware of the rising energy costs. Um, we're all facing uh, higher bills at the moment. Um, so the council's uh, keen to support residents, of course, um, to access energy efficiency schemes. Um, these will not only reduce uh, residents' bills, also help reduce their carbon footprint as well. Um, it's a good scheme. Um, I'd like to recommend um, that we, uh, we agree to it. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got to say about that. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments from cabinet members? No? Okay, you're moving those. Move. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Summers again. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Agenda item 8, Tamworth Community Safety Plan. <coughs> Councillor Doyle. No, Councillor Summers. Councillor Doyle had it for too he many could years. could if you wanted to. I'm, I'm quite happy to delay. Um, I'll, I'll try and still uh, too much of... Uh, Joe's uh, <laughs> thunder tonight because uh, she's kindly agreed to come along our assistant director of partnerships uh, but um, the uh, report or rather the document before us uh, with recommendations that I'll read in a moment uh, is the Tamworth Community Safety uh, com the Tamworth Community Safety Partnership Plan and it's a statutory document we must produce every three years it sets out our work plan aims and priorities working with our partners the police fire service and Staffordshire County Council and of course our amazing voluntary sector and sets priorities for our joint focus to tackle issues in a joined up manner across the borough and across the next three years um, our priorities are ASB antisocial behavior domestic abuse including stalking and harassment community cohesion, drugs, crime and related harm, serious and public place violence, vehicle crime and vulnerable people. Although it does say vulnerable persons in the report, I prefer people to speak. <laughs> An update uh, report against the actions over the last year has provided on the priority areas uh, identified for 2020 to 2023 over a you know, much changed environment. Uh, at Appendix 1 of the report, um, if you want to see how the last plan went against its objectives. It's a great report um, overall, well worth a look to see under the hood of how we operate with our partners. Um, there's a heck of a lot going on uh, just within the council alone. Um, it is uh, the last time for a few years it will be in front of us for the interim updates we have to give, we have to make. Um, so the annual refresh uh, will be overseen by the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Committee uh, for 2024 and 25, uh, but we're approving tonight the um, the report, uh, the, the full report for 23 to 26. Um, I'll hand over to Joe if, if you've got anything to add to that. 
I haven't counted. Thank you. I mean, obviously, the report is self-explanatory. From we've we've had some very good successes over the last three years. Uh, you'll see in there a, a, a further work plan for the for the next three, which we're hoping to update every six months. Uh, and obviously, then I'd be able to give the um, report back to the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Committee. So yes, sir, thank you. I think that's the report fully covers all the work that's gone on. That's great. And if if our, if our residents do ask, um, you know, what what are we doing about this? That's will point them to that plan as I did the other week. So, um, so I'd like to move the recommendations as follows. Obviously, the, if there are any questions afterwards, um, cabinet support the content of the report in terms of the progress made on the community safety plan, twenty 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 three. Uh, 2022 update. Uh, Cabinet supports endorsement of the 23-26 partnership plan for publication and return to the Staffordshire Commissioner's Office. I uh, move those recommendations. Any questions? Thank you very much, Councillor Summers. Any questions or comments from Cabinet members? Okay, Councillor Summers has proposed that. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Doyle seconds. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. So that brings us Ooh, excuse me, and to item nine, which is the exclusion of press and public, and that's in accordance with the provision of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meeting and access to information, England Regulation 2012, Section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, that press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of the Schedule A of the Act, and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. I so move to have a seconder. That is seconded by multiple people. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. So if any members of the press and public could leave, please, we bid them good night, and if the cameras can be switched off. <laughs>